Let's look at the language uh, that we're hearing this morning about this. Intolerable, appalled, that's the British Prime Minister. Outraged, that's the US President. I mean, this execution, which is what it was, effectively, this execution of seven aid workers, feels like some sort of watershed this morning, doesn't it? Because this time yesterday, as the news was breaking, the general assumption was, before the details came through, that it was probably some sort of awful collateral damage, mm. um, that these workers had been killed incidentally in some other kind of um, uh, uh, conflict. But now we know that it was ex extremely targeted. The first vehicle was hit in this small convoy. Some of the workers survived and managed to get out and get into another vehicle. That moved off, that was hit. Then I th there was one third vehicle that was still proceeding and about a kilometre later, that was hit. So they were hit three separate times. And just look at this. I mean, this, this is like, this is bullseye aiming. Uh, absolutely no accidental collateral damage here at all. This is, a, this is an execution. What were the Israeli forces thinking? Well, it's, it's, it's terrible, but, and the direct consequence of this, Richard, is a huge convoy of aid that was on its way into Gaza was turned back. Mm. So, is Israel... We know starvation is a, a, a clever form of war. I, I wonder if this was deliberately, cynically targeted to try to stop aid getting to people in That's Gaza. That's a big wonder. It's a, I'm not saying it is, but it was a massive aid convoy that was on its way in, was turned back because the people in charge of that convoy thought they cannot be responsible for it and the, the volunteers after what happened to those seven people. And remember, we've lost nearly 200 aid workers yep. in the country. Mm. I think it's 196. Since October uh, yeah, so we're shocked because these are three Brits here, but this has been going on a lot. But this one did reek of cynically targeting. Like, uh, starvation has been used as a weapon of war. It's a war crime. Uh, you're, you're right, 200 other aid workers have been killed in some ways to bring it to public prominence. The, the killing of, uh, you know, uh, three Britons amongst seven others is... It's, it's somehow, somehow feels a bit shaming when so many others are being killed. But if you look across the piece, there's been 32, 33,000 people killed in Gaza by the Israelis. The vast majority are women and children who are not combatants. It almost feels as if it moves, shoot, kill it. Uh, because you've had so many reports of medical staff, other aid workers, families just being obliterated. Now, the apologies have got to end. Look, this, this is a war crime. Now, Britain has got legal advice, we believe, the Foreign Office. Alicia Cairns, chair of the All Party Foreign Affairs Committee, said the government has got legal advice that humanitarian law has been broken. The government should publish that advice so we can see that our government believes war crimes are being committed by Israel. Mm. And why are we still selling weapons and defence equipment and supporting Israel? Long-standing ally, but they are guilty here of a war crime. So they, they huge sympathy what happened on October the 7th. Hamas was savage, and that in itself was a crime, what happened in Israel. But... The killing and the mass slaughter of so many Palestinians and aid workers is a war crime. We can't, we can't just keep saying, oh, look, this isn't good enough, we need inquiries, uh, this is it's terrible. You've got to act. You, ca you cannot allow this to happen. Can you imagine if it was Russia doing this in Ukraine? We quite rightly, utterly condemn it. You'd be imposing sanctions. We impose sanctions. Why is Israel being allowed to do this in Gaza? And so it's not just us, it's also the Americans. They're still supplying arms. When we Why look at what Israel on? have said about this, the Israeli military, the latest is they've said it was a grave mistake. Benjamin Netanyahu said the convoy they were in was hit unintentionally. This happens in war. We're conducting a thorough inquiry. We'll do everything to prevent a recurrence on this. Of course, I mean, Andrew, do you think that, yeah. you know, when we see the reaction yeah. of the world leaders, as Kevin has said, this, you know, this has been going on for some time yeah. now. Is this the moment where things change, do you it, think? It feels to me like there is... Uh, the, the, the tectonic plates have shifted. Because, of course, people where aid workers are going to get killed in a military conflict, because that's what happens, uh, collateral damage, indiscriminate fire. But this seems so contrived and targeted. It's not a, sing it's not a single missile. It was three it's three separate, separate missiles and, and, over a period of minutes. And, that's and all the these difference. vehicles are clearly marked... Uh, on the roof. On the roof, couldn't be clear what they are, and the the, the, the people uh, firing the Israeli missiles no, uh, knew knew what they were firing at. I just wanted to put a counterpoint to what you said in your your speculation that maybe this was a, a yeah. deliberate uh, um, taking out of an aid convoy for a wider agenda. Mm. 
Given the international reaction, and as you say, that could mean the tectonic plates are changing, this could be a watershed moment, wouldn't that be a huge own goal by the Israeli military to do this? Because they must have known they'd get this kind of response from the President of the well, US, from the British Prime Minister, from world leaders, Possibly, everywhere. But, but, but if they're trying to starve the enemy to death, then this, but all this aid now being diverted, that's going to be highly effective. And he's still intent on pursuing that last town. He's going to carry on. So do you think Netanyahu. he's lying then? Do you think Netanyahu is lying when he says that this was, uh, this was an accident? This... Well, he wasn't. He, I don't think he, he won't have made the order to fire, but it seems very difficult to see how that can have been an accident. If it was one missile that took out yes. the jeep, but three... What do you think of that? Right, I, I, don't, I don't know. No. Right? In truth, I don't know. But the aid organisations, including World Central Kitchen, have to agree with the Israeli military they where they will be. So they they have have the, the paperwork is phenomenal, yep. apparently. Yeah, yeah. Yep. About where they're operating, yep. what they're yep. doing, nah, so that everyone knows. They knew exactly knows. where they were. But starvation is being used as a weapon of war. That is so a that war crime. That is a war crime. And... It's excuse after excuse after excuse. We take great care. If you take great care, why have more than 20,000 women and children been killed? Uh, it's not just the Hamas health authority saying that. It's the UN operating there. It's uh, aid agencies operating there in Gaza. It's brave, independent journalists in Gaza. Now, we can't get in. Other news organisations can't get in. You know, it, it's okay. blockaded by the Egyptians mm. as well as the yep. Israelis. But there are brave journalists in there bringing out pictures, bringing out information. Mm. Many of them have been killed as well. Look, this is not precision. This is not being careful. This is slaughtering people. But, but the starvation thing, I've just come back from a few days away in Malta. The German tactic to, to, to conquer Malta during the Second World War was to starve the people to death. It was a, a two and a half year siege. It nearly worked. And it, they did that with Leningrad as well. Exactly. So it's a well known way of. Yes. Make, in the end, the people. What give do we in. make of the statement which has come overnight from Israel? A little bit more detail. They're saying now that at the warehouse that the aid had been delivered mm. to, and then the convoy left, um, at the warehouse, Israeli drones, basically, spotted a known Hamas terrorist. They do face right. recognition, you know, from 1,000 metres up, they can do it. Uh, and he was carrying a gun. Uh, and he was seen in the vicinity of the warehouse. And, and they seem to be implying that that was the reason that they ordered the strike. Well, possibly, but you remember one of the first casualties of war, they always say, is the truth. And we always yeah. have to remember that. Hang on, you can't... If you can, you can go after a terrorist, you can go after Ham Hamas leadership. That's, that is legitimate after what happened on October the 7th. But you cannot just slaughter people, which is happening. Well, uh, you can't say, oh, well, unfortunately, there's, there's Kevin, a you can. Well, what, so, well, 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 <laughs> well you can. So what we happens got a now, then? We've had world leaders speaking out about this, you know, calling for an investigation. What, what, what will be the next steps with this? Is it the case that, you know, what, if another aid worker is killed, then... What will... Then will there just be more hand... Be drawn, or? Will there be more hand well, rain I, and condemnation by the, by the world community? Is that it? Well, I don't see... Um, um, I don't think... So, you, um, Israel has to depend on the United States, and Biden has criticised it, but I can't see the United States pulling, withdrawing support, particularly in the run-up to general, a presidential election in America. I just don't. No, but, but it should. But, should. I did, but, it, but it won't. The very in least, election year. At the very least, stop supplying arms. Well, let's, let's ask what, what a Labour government might do if a Labour government was in power, because uh, Labour leader Sakir Starmer, as we know, has condemned the strikes yesterday that killed these, these, these poor men. And has called, and women, and has called uh, for a stop to the war, something that uh, the Prime Minister stopped sort of saying in his own response. We're now joined by the Shadow Chief's Treasury Secretary, Darren Jones, uh, for Labour this morning. Good morning, Mr Jones. Good morning. Thanks for joining. I hope you've been able to hear some of what we've been saying. Um, there's, th there's a widespread call around the world today to stop sending arms to Israel, that the Americans should stop doing it and we should stop doing it. Would you support that? Well, I can understand in the circumstances why people would call for that, and that's why we all want the war to stop. The fact of the matter is, if the UK, for example, stopped supplying arms, the war would not end. What we need to do is get the parties to a position where the fighting can stop. And I think what we've seen from President Biden, from Keir Starmer, and now from Lord Cameron, our own Foreign Secretary, is that countries that supported Israel's right to defend itself and to recover its hostages from Hamas terrorists in Gaza, which clearly is their right to have done in the first place, have all said that you've gone too far, uh, that we need to bring this war to an end. We need to get around the negotiating table. We need to allow aid to get to people who desperately need it in Gaza. And this latest situation, not only has it 
resulted in the death of aid workers, which is unacceptable, but it's now making it much harder for aid to be made available to people who are in the most desperate situations. Well, that's the point, isn't it, Mr Jones? I mean, everything you say is a truism. I mean, we all want the war to stop. Everybody wants the war to stop. Everybody wants Israel to, to, to be secure. Everybody wants Gaza to return to some kind of normality. But it's just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And, 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 and the more condemnation there is, and, and, the, and the comments from our own Prime Minister and from the American President overnight are, are devastating in terms of the relationship with Israel, it doesn't make any difference. Well, that's because it's for Israel and Hamas to agree to stop fighting. As I've said repeatedly on your show and in other media rounds over many months since this war happened in October, we didn't want the terrorist attacks to happen in the first place. We don't want the war to happen. There are many things that we might not want to happen mm. uh, sat here in the United Kingdom or in the United States. What we and our allies have tried to do is to uh, persuade Israel and Hamas to stop fighting, to release the hostages and to get around the negotiating table. That has failed so far and both sides are now testing the patience of their allies and neighbours uh, around the world and that's why we have all been much, much stronger in our public words and no doubt stronger in our private words through diplomatic channels to say that this must stop, peace must uh, return to the Middle East, aid must get to people who desperately need it and we need to get to a political dialogue as quickly as possible. There are those that say that international law is being broken over this. Is that something that you agree with? As always on questions of international law, it's for judges and courts to make that decision, not for politicians. That's not to say that scenes that we've seen are not horrifying. They are. That's why we've asked for the war to stop. But decisions of international law need to be taken in international courts with international law judges. Are we in this country, and are, are the Americans as well, deluding ourselves that we actually can have any influence on this? Because everything that's been said uh, by the leaders of both countries so far has, as I said, made zero difference at all. In fact, the situation, as we've seen yesterday, is simply getting worse and worse. That, in effect, uh, Israel and Hamas are simply saying to the world, it's nothing to do with you. This is, this is our war and we'll fight it on our terms. Go away. Diplomacy is hard. I mean, I think there's been small wins uh, from allies trying to negotiate by the Qataris with Hamas and most prominently by the Americans with Israel. You'll remember that there has been temporary ceasefires, there had been um, release of hostages, there had been some aid made available, there had been some political negotiation um, around what might happen next. And all of those were small wins, but you're right to point out that we're still in this situation and it's getting worse and worse by the day. The fact of the matter is that allies can only apply diplomatic pressure to countries to try to get them to do the right thing in these circumstances, and that's what we're all trying to do. Mm. So Keir Starmer has talked about this, saying there must be a full investigation, those responsible must be held to account. But what does being held to account in this situation actually mean? Mm. Good question. Well, you know, Israel has uh, confirmed that it was a drone strike that led to the death of those aid workers over the past few days. One of them is a relative of one of my own constituents here in Bristol Northwest, and uh, we've been in touch with the family. These are these are real, uh, real tragedies for the people involved, not least because these are people who were trying to help uh, people in the most desperate situations that you could uh, uh, imagine. The investigation that we're calling for will have to will have to hopefully identify why this drone strike took place. The convoy was, it seems, clearly marked by the images that have been released overnight, including on the roof, let alone on the side of the vehicles. I understand it was a, a, a professionally run organisation, that the, the, the journey they were taking, the actions they were uh, undertaking had been reported and notified. Uh, how on earth could this have, have happened? Uh, that's what the investigation needed to uncover. Either it was you know, a mistake. I don't, I don't I kind of see how that might have happened. Uh, or it was done on purpose. And if so, how, how could that have happened? And why would someone have been given the order to do that? These are the questions that those families will now want answering. And that's why we're calling for an investigation to get the answers to those questions. Well, you, you posed the question, was it an accident or was it done on purpose? I mean, now we know the detail of how events unfolded over a period of minutes. Uh, it's very hard to see it. And anyone w with any sense of reality uh, couldn't really see it as an accident. It looks like a highly targeted, specific series of attacks on the convoy. It wasn't just one explosion, there were three separate attacks. So I think, I think the answer to your question is, is pretty clear, but although we're not absolutely sure.